You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Okay, well, as you can see, I'm back. Um, Mr. Beaver is going to try rejoining us in a few minutes. He's having major computer issues. Uh, his, currently, his desktop computer has no audio whatsoever. So whatever happened, happened uh, while we were broadcasting. I don't know if it has to... Oh, he says he's got it fixed. Okay. All right. So he should join us in just a second, and uh, we'll be good to go. Awesome. This is great news. This is great news. Okay, let me just kill this. And uh, I got stuff, I got all kinds of stuff here in the background that I got to shut down and fix and readjust and rejig. You, you know how that goes, right? Okay, there we go. So we're back. Well, at least I am for the time being. And Mr. Beaver should be here in a minute or two. Uh, let's just say on a freezing cold, chilly day like today, it's kind of a reason to understand things just not wanting to work correctly <laughs> it happens okay i'm going to send him a message here via the old shoe phone uh, if you're old enough to get that reference please say so in the chat and sent the link and let him know that he's good to go all right so he should join us in a moment or two Oh, Mel, are you out of coffee at home? I, I have a coffee here. Here's a coffee. Take a sip. You get a sip of that right there? Yeah. Oh, my camera just turned over this way. I forgot to put it on lock. <laughs> it happens. I still call it my shoe phone. And um, there we go. There's a cheers. I still call it the shoe phone. Shoe phone was Maxwell Smart, Agent 86 from Get Smart, the old television program from the 60s, which was a take on the James Bond series. Hello, sir. Hello. Finally figured it out. What was it? Uh, just the main volume on the computer just took a dive off the cliff and set itself to reset itself down to zero. Oh, okay. So it wasn't anything that died then. It just... There was a gremlin in the system and decided to have fun with you. <laughs> yep, that little volume button that you press in the lower right hand yeah. corner. I yeah. guess it just like it just fell off a cliff and dropped itself to zero. Well, there, there's oh, something you know to to check from here on out each time, right? There's like yeah. you gotta start adding to the checklist of things to do when we fire up in the morning. <laughs> Holy crap on a cracker. It's like I don't wake up on time to start the show yesterday, then I get three minutes into the show today and I get booted off by my own sound. It's like it takes two days to do one show. 
Well, you know, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it together. Uh, we'll get it together. We we want to give. We want to give the kids. You know, some entertainment, some information, some news. Uh, and yes, Linda, I'd like a cone of silence as well. That would be a wonderful thing to have on some days. I think uh, we're just talking about. I said, you know, I was sending you a message via my shoe phone. Oh, you know, and you yes. have to be of a certain age to get that one, right? <laughs> and I have my moccasin cell. <laughs> moccasin cell. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a link in the chat for the for the kids who aren't familiar with the original Get Smart series. Uh, Smart. Let me just. It's like. Oh, yeah, hold on. I got another call coming. Hello? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, have, I have call waiting. Yeah, call waiting before it was a thing. Yeah. Here's a link to Get Smart in the uh, in the chat. I just put that in there. And, Missed it uh, by this much. <laughs> that much. Missed it by that much. <laughs> <laughs> Written by Buck uh, Henry. And, and here's a here's a photo of um, the late Don Adams with his shoe phone right here. There he is. Boom. There he is on his shoe phone. There you go. It was a rotary dial, by the way. It, you yes. pop the heel off and flip up the tab. There's the uh, the microphone and, and the rotary dial, as you can see. Yeah, the Maxwell Smart shoe phone from Get Smart Stereo Moccasins. Okay. okay. So uh, what did I miss? Uh, well, I started off, I started talking about this woman who is out of her mind. Um, I'll, I'll review it real quickly. This woman here, um, I talked about her, I read it out for the kits, but uh, I'm going to have to reread it because the original feed is completely scrambled and shot and my recording stopped. So I'm just going to take this from a separate recording. My child's kindergarten teacher master behind my back today have made it clear we don't do masks. So if you're wondering how life in a blue state is, angry, red-faced, angry icon. And of course, the reply was, you people are so dramatic. Eight years ago, my friend's son went through cancer treatment. He wore a mask at school for three years. His classmates and teacher voted to wear one too to make it easier on him. The parents were all in support. Everyone did great. Empathy and kindness prevailed. I feel for you, but masks may have actually hurt your child as they don't work, create a false sense of security. People send sick kids to school because masks and spread germs further because kids can't stop touching their faces. To which I responded with, according to PNAS, which is um, the, the uh, uh, I got to look it up again. I just forgot how, to, how you call it. It's the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a peer-reviewed journal of the National Academy of Sciences. And according to them, uh, these these are the folks who would know. Uh, according to them, mask wearing in community settings reduces SARS COVID two transmission. So please tell me again how it doesn't work when an actual scientific study proves that it does. Somebody did say something to the woman in in the Twitter uh, thread about how maybe you'll tell surgeons not to wear a mask too. She goes, I'm fine with that. They might want to wear a mask in case something squirts out of my body body during surgery. I'm like, oh, lady, you have been down the bias confirmation echo chamber of stupidity for so long, you can't even see the light of day anymore. Jeez. Masks work. It's been proven time and time again. And when somebody tells me masks don't work, I'm like, we're not having this conversation. We're not having this conversation. It's not Because next you're going to tell me we didn't go to the moon and the earth is flat. I'm not speaking to people like that. I'm not engaging with them because mm -hmm. they believe what they believe will refuse to believe anything that can actually runs counter to their narrative and won't listen to reason, logic, or science. So no, I'm not engaging with those people. They're, they're ridiculous and they're going to get people harmed. And that's what I hate to see. Although I did speak to Dean about it and he says, no, let those people do that. <laughs> They'll slowly remove themselves from the gene pool. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But but what my trouble is that these people procreate. These people have children and then and the children grooming. are left without parents. And then we have a bigger problem. Yeah. You want to talk about grooming. But they is don't that? see it that way. Yeah. No, they don't. No, they're raising their children. Everybody else is indoctrinating theirs or grooming them. Yes. But yes. they're... Yes, they're only raising their children. Yes. I don't know. I don't understand that either myself. You know, it's like masks don't work. It's like, 
but it's clearly they do boo boo kitty. It's like you don't want masks to work. There's a difference, yeah. Right. It's like the, the, we're we're doing this thing again where we're stating wishful thinking as a fact. <laughs> this is yeah. what you need want need slash want slash wish slash were true for your narrative to stick. So you are stating your wishful thinking as a fact. It's not a fact. Further down that rabbit hole of uh, scientific <laughs> ignorance, I have a I have I'm only going to show maybe 30 or 40 seconds of this clip because it goes on for almost five minutes and I can't handle this for more than more than a minute. But I just want to start it off with this so that you, you'll get a, a, an idea of how fascism is slowly taking over the United States of America and it's creeping its way here into Canada as well via Skippy. This was shared from um, TFG, the former guy, uh, his, uh, I don't know, website, but here, just watch a couple of seconds of this video to get an understanding of where we are today with fascism in America. It's really, really distant. Our public schools have been taken over by the radical left maniacs. Here is my plan to save American education, restore uh, power Merle, please. Uh, to American Merle, please. parents. First, we will cut federal funding for any school or program pushing critical race theory, gender ideology, or other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. I'm not going to allow it to happen. Next, I will direct the Department of Justice and Education to open civil rights and nations into any school district that has engaged in race-based discrimination. Oh, girl, you're not going to do any I've of that. You're going to jail. I've had about enough of that. Like, I had to share that because it was like, are you kidding me? Cut funding for you teaches critical race theory. See, that's just blatant white supremacy and racism right there on the surface for all to see. He's not even hiding it anymore. They've been so emboldened over the last few years that they've come out of the shadows. So it's easy to spot them because they usually tend to tell you exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, um, Kit Saucy said when we're talking about masks, my favorite is when they say it prevents your body from getting oxygen but doesn't stop transmission of viruses. I'm not a science, but I, scientist, but I would assume that a molecule of oxygen is smaller <laughs> than a virus. Yeah, they just, they, just, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. They refuse to so believe anything the, that runs counter to their narrative. If the smaller thing gets, doesn't get through, how does the bigger thing? I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. And, and I've refused to try and bother to understand because it, the mental gymnastics one has to do to come up with this crap is just Simone Biles, the greatest gymnast that's ever lived and may very well be the greatest gymnast that ever lives. I mean, she's invented moves that they let her do in competition because nobody else can do them, which I think yeah. is wrong. Yeah. I can do this. Nobody else can. Shouldn't I be allowed to do it? Because I'm the greatest there is. Anyway, the mental gymnastics they have to do would have Simone Biles going, no, nah, I, I, I'm going to try that one. No, nope, not doing it. Not doing it. It's too much. Too much. Somebody will die. And that's what's going to happen. People are going to die because of ignorance and ignorance is bliss, right? Yep. <laughs> is a brick smaller than a house? <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. Um, we have a, a little bit of good news from, for, from a friend of the pod. Oh, and what might that be? All right, I will put it up there. I just spotted this. I knew this was happening, but I didn't know it was today specifically. Uh, but it is today specifically. There you go, Mr. Oh. Wesley. Please put it up. Okay, just a second. There's our friend our, Bryson. Uh, yeah, Bryson, friend of the pod. He had, we did an interview. He, well, he was gracious enough to give us an interview uh, about indigenous uh, allyship etiquette. Uh, we did a two-parter. It uh, was before we joined the main network, so you'd have to mm -hmm. look at our archives to find it. Very, 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 you got to move your cursor. It looks like you're picking his nose. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let's clean that up for you. Um, so <laughs> you are awful, man. No, it, it was really troubling to me. I, 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 I ADHD that. and OCD, man. I mean, like, 
Oh, darn. No, no, no. Oh, darn. I lost it. Oh, crap. Oh, uh, curling oh. beavers. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, go yeah, ahead oh, and get it back okay. when you can. Um, but uh, yeah, essentially, uh, he there's he's getting um, his oh, turn. Captain? Captaincy? Yeah. I lost it. Sorry. No, no. Yes, he does do some uh, stuff on uh, on ships. He did this uh, wonderful trip this uh, I think this past summer. We were just doing something, looking at the wreck of the Titanic or something. Oh, him. really? Yeah, yeah. He did this uh, really, really interesting thing. But no, he is uh, wearing his ribbon shirt under uh, that jacket. You can see if you put mm-hmm. it back up there, Mister Grizzly. Yeah, um, because you should be able is- to click on it and blow up the tweet itself, right? Can you not make it bigger? Well, that's what I tried to do, and then I lost the screen. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there okay. you go. There you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yes, he's wearing his ribbon shirt right there, right underneath it, mm-hmm. because uh, he's going to his naming ceremony this afternoon. Oh, cool. Yes. He's going to get his uh, his McBaugh name, I believe. Oh, very cool. Yes. Uh, so Well done, Bryson. Yes. Yes. I'm so, so happy for him. I don't know all the ins and outs of what that means and, you know, what goes into that because I am culturally ignorant, um, mm-hmm. but I know enough to know that this is a freaking big deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's an incredible honor. Indeed. So, uh, I'm happy for you, my friend. Uh, I hope the day is everything that you hope it would be. And apparently if it's apparently. the same as uh, two years ago, cause I stumbled upon a tweet uh, that came every now and then there's a tweet of mine from the past that comes back to life every now and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, if it's the same date, uh, then the 31st was uh Mi'kmaq new year. Oh, okay, cool. So, happy new year. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm uh, hoping to uh, hear and see photos from his uh, naming ceremony afterwards, and uh, I want to hear all about it because that sounds like it's a pretty wicked thing to happen to someone. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He, just little... it, it's, it's like it's like the uh, Cosa Nostra. He's now a made man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, a, uh, a made guy, a made guy. I don't know. A uh, guy. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't throw humor in there, but it, it, it's sort of an understanding for for folks who don't quite fully get it. I think you can. A lot of folks would be able to understand what that means. You know, the, the significance of that. It's like you have. You are now like fully accepted into your community as a, a prominent, a strong, proud member. I would assume that that's what would that would have to mean. I would think. I would think. Right. That you're. I mean. I'm not sure if it's like like a level of eldership along I, the way. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm training? just a dumb old Irish white guy. So, well, Irish, yeah. Yeah, fifth generation Canadian. And, you know, <laughs> I'm Irish on St. Patrick's Day. And when I see a young lady who likes a fellow who drinks the point of Guinness, I'll be very Irish. But the thing is this, you see, I'm, I'm as Irish as my, uh, my made in Canada Japanese car. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, and my my Honda Civic was made in Alliston, Ontario, right? So that's why I say my made in Canada Japanese car. Um, <laughs> jeez. Um, we're going to um go back. I have uh, some news on some stuff. Catch up uh, on some stuff that we had missed that sort of slipped through the cracks uh, hmm. as we were uh, pursuing other stories, uh, but. Uh, there's been some consequences from uh, the Christmas storm that oh. we had had. Um, there were a whole bunch of other things that had happened that we didn't get to report on. So, for example, during the storm, uh, there was a bridge in the Fraser Valley that had been closed, and then there was a bus crash uh, that had unfortunately killed four on an extremely icy highway due to freezing rain on Highway 97C on a route between Kelowna and Merritt, B.C., mm. uh, and uh, it resulted in uh, 53 people taken to three hospitals. Uh, wow. Most were dismissed, but but the following mo- by the following morning, seven were still in the hospital with two in serious condition. Um, they had two successive uh, storms afterwards uh, with something called the King Tide out there. So that's pretty high waves because after they had received all that snow, then they received some rain with the warming temperature and then they had the snow melt as well. That was happening. So all these things were contributing to flooding conditions in the province. Um, so uh, Environment Canada was saying that melting snow milks mixed with strong winds and high tides could cause damaging floods and storm surges. Um, 
of course, we had the problem with uh, Via and Sunwing and Air Canada. And um, the things at uh, Pearson Airport were made particularly worse because uh, there was a broken luggage belt due to extreme cold temperatures. So the plate, basically the rubber snapped. That happens. <laughs> for all intents and purposes, uh, which caught, didn't help with the baggage delays, right? Because some people got to their destinations late and then their luggage <laughs> arrived too late. Didn't arrive or arrived, yeah. Or didn't arrive at all. Yeah. Um, so they got it when they got home. Here's your luggage. Or the couple in Toronto, was it Toronto, whose uh, luggage was lost and then they found, they had put uh, the GPS tracking tags on it. Then they found it had been donated. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's like, not a good um, look for the company. Hey, Air Canada, maybe not donate somebody's luggage um, when when they're waiting for it to be received from you that you lost three weeks or was it three weeks or three months or whatever it was. It was yeah. a long, a long time. Anyway, yeah. that happened to me sort of once, not, not, but my luggage got sold to charity, uh, but I was going down to Mexico and my luggage did not arrive and oh. uh, was three days late and. Fortunately, because I had a credit card that had some bonus things that I had like $500 mm-hmm. in emergency funds to go buy clothes because um, being on the beach in Puerto Vallarta in winter boots and the ski jacket. Not is comfortable. Not comfortable. Not a comfortable yeah. look. <laughs> well, see, that's why, that's why I, um, I do not check luggage. I don't. Mm-hmm. I refuse to check luggage. I only take a, a rolling carry-on with a small satchel. I pack everything I need in there and I'm good to go. And somebody says, well, what about when you get where you're going? What if you need more clothes? <laughs> buy buy them. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm one of those, uh, unfortunately one of those rainbow people who is born with the gene that made it impossible for me to pack light. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm an extremely gold folder and I get a lot into a small space. <laughs> All right. I My for sweetie you, always man. has me pack for us because apparently I know how to fold stuff. <laughs> I'll take you at your word, good sir. <laughs> um, so thousands experienced delays and cancellations and many were stuck in airports here and abroad. Um, and WestJet, WestJet and Sunwing uh, in particular in Canada were affected. Uh, there were electrical outages all over the place, of course. Uh, and uh, the city of Buffalo and upstate New York got hit particularly hard because their airport was still closed after Christmas and there were more than two dozen, two dozen dead in that city. Uh, and they actually had to call in FEMA to coordinate disaster relief efforts to save lives and avert the threat of further catastrophe. At one point, almost every fire truck in the city of Buffalo was stuck in the snow. That's wow. how bad it got. They got 190 centimeters of snow during that storm. Um, That's a lot of snow. There were, yes, there were over 17,000 cancellations at one point earlier in uh, early in the storm, uh, according to Flightware, which tracks airline activity. Southwest Airlines in the states canceled at least 70 percent of its flights on one day due to a system meltdown afterwards uh when that left crews and planes trapped in the wrong place uh 60% of flights are were affected uh over 16,000 flights were canceled during the holiday season by Southwest Airlines alone in the United States uh oh, wow um, they, yeah uh Basically, the Transport Workers Union representative Lynn Montgomery said, the phone systems that the company uses are just not working. They're just not, are working, but they're just not manned with enough manpower in order to give the scheduling chances, uh, scheduling changes to flight attendants. So basically, they were able to make the schedule changes and reroute Mm. the planes, but then they didn't have enough people at the call centers to call all the crews to tell them where to show up. That's how bad the system so, had broken down. Well, they understaffed too. Don't forget, and, and that's usually done because they don't want to pay people. Yep. Oh, Kit Hugh, want to get rid of a body? Just check it into Air Canada baggage. Yeah, I, I posted that. I love going to the the counter and going. Um, I know I bought a ticket to Montreal, but um, could you send me to Hawaii and my bags to Montreal instead? <laughs> Does that has that ever worked? I, no. no, nobody's taking me up on that. <laughs> um, Worth a shot. It, yes. If you were traveling in the United States and did have a flight on Southwest, uh, 
as part of your travel plans. Um, the company has apologized and set up a website where people can apply for refunds and reimbursements for things like food, accommodations, and alternate travel costs. Southwest is also offering 25,000 frequent flyer points worth about $300 as a gesture of goodwill to passengers that had flights delayed more than three hours or canceled between Christmas Eve and January 2nd. So if that's you, uh, please make sure that you take some time to go to the Southwest site. Um, so uh, those will be given, uh, those 25,000 points will be given over and above any refunds and reimbursements to which you are entitled. Um, Southwest is facing multiple investigations, scrutiny from our investors, and at least one lawsuit. Uh, in Canada, Sunwings airline operations were heavily impacted by severe weather with technical issues leaving staff scattered and customers left out of the loop regarding flight delays and reschedulings. reschedulings. Some were left in the dark for days on how they were going to get home. And uh, most egregiously, the company had cancelled all flights out of Regina and Saskatoon until February 3rd which was today, because it was not able to arrange for extra pilots to deal with demand, saying passengers will receive a full refund. The pilots um, did not agree with that version. No way. Eh? Sorry, no. The pilots said that uh, they were available to fly. Uh, stranded Sunwing passengers are starting to make their, started to make their way home about a week later than planned, and uh, Sunwing said that they were trying to hire foreign pilots for the winter, but couldn't. Uh, so a lack of staff and the winter storm forced cancellations, but they were not able to explain why Sask Saskatchewan flights to both Regina and Saskatoon airports exclusively were cut. The storm's disruption of Sunwing's operations led to the company leaving thousands stranded. Um, most were home about a week later. Uh, some spent thousands of dollars to fly on other airlines. Sunwing says impacted passengers can apply for compensation via its website. Some are exploring legal action, including a class action lawsuit. Travel expert Duncan Dees says, quote, The airline has the responsibility to bring the traveler to where they are paid to go and to bring them back to where they started. And if Sunwing isn't able to do that, the federal government certainly has the powers under the legislation to ensure Sunwing complies. Um, Omar Algabra, the federal transport minister, is quoted as saying, "There are a lot. There's a lot of things that came together, unfortunately, at the same time. Certainly driven by the extreme weather events that took place in two different parts of the country, and the ramification that that had on the air sector." But I think Sunwing itself had its own operational issues that unfortunately caused a lot of frustrations for many of their customers, adding that Sunwing lacked slack in their operation, which led to frustrating incidents during the holiday travel, and that the lack of communication from the airline to the customers was, quote, unacceptable. The Liberal Chair of the Transport Committee is the one, and uh, we mentioned this on a previous show, who uh, called everybody to the committee together, and to particularly to bring in people from Air Canada, Sunwing, and VIA to explain what went wrong. Conservatives tried to take credit for that, but it is the Liberal Chair of that committee who struck, uh, who asked for all of them to come back, and who got the minister to come to testify as well. Uh, and he agreed voluntarily and enthusiastically to come and testify. So it wasn't this kicking and screaming thing, uh, the way the conservatives are trying to spin it. Um, Air Canada and WestJet passengers had been complaining of thousands of missing bags. The officer of the Minister of Transport had been in touch with airlines and airports and reminded Canadians that they can file a complaint with the Canadian Transportation Agency for all disruptions, including lost luggage. However, as we've mentioned several times on the show, uh, the agency reported in November that it had a 30,000 complaint backlog. Uh, that's been uh, increased up to about 33,000, according to last numbers we've had. And the government has at that point in uh, November, put $11 million towards reducing that backlog. Um, now, one of the reasons for which there's a backlog is because the rules uh, as they are currently is that only the eight members of the Canadian Transport Agency board, I guess, or there's a committee that does that specifically, were able to adjudicate those decisions. And it looks like there might be changes to the regulations coming that would allow lower level employees of the agency to make those decisions for themselves, particularly on more routine and standard uh, type questions that would be easily to solve in order to get people their refunds a little faster. Um, 
The backlog uh, and the chaos also prompted the federal transport minister to announce that he's looking at tightening up airline passenger protection rules in order to put greater onus on the airlines. Um, when those passenger bill of rights rules came out, a lot of complaints, even from uh, Duncan Knees, who's uh, who we quoted earlier, who's really the expert. To, he basically looks at these plans from all around the world and you know gives an assessment on uh, you know who's doing best on uh, airline passenger rights and those types of things, uh, and. Uh, the basic complaint was that the original rules that were put out uh, didn't really have much teeth. Uh, it was mm-hmm. sometimes in politics, often in politics, so you, you get this action for action's sake thing where a uh, government will announce a new policy or plan of some type to make it look like they're doing something, but really it doesn't do anything, but it gives the semblance of action and it calms uh, the quests, uh, requests from the opposition to do something, yeah, especially when there's like nothing that can be done, but you still Think have to of the like, children. Oh. <laughs> oh, gee. Think of the children in the elderly. Oh. Sex cauldron. I thought they tore that place down. <laughs> what? Don't you remember Krusty the Crown, the burlesque house? Oh, jeez. Don't speak about S-E-X in front of the C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N. Sex cauldron? I thought they tore that place down. <laughs> Krusty the Clown. Oops, sorry. Got a cough for a second. Oh, my goodness gracious. Whoops. There you go. Um, so... Yes. Uh, the Basically, the main complaint was that the initial version of our rules didn't have much teeth. They had been strengthened already uh, once or twice, and it looks like they're going to have to do it again. And maybe this time, finally, uh, after this incident, uh, there's going to be some actual investigation. Bringing them in line. Too. Yes, right. and, and bringing them more in line with the passenger rights that, uh, as, they, uh, as they happen in Europe, where a lot of these things are just routine. Mm-hmm. Right, like just oh yep yeah we screwed up here's your check boom right and there's no uh, no specific applications and all that type of stuff um, so the airline uh, passenger bill of rights lays out a standard of treatment that includes airlines providing up to two thousand four hundred dollars in compensation to passengers who had to be moved from an overbooked flight and up to two thousand one hundred for lost or damaged luggage uh, as we mentioned regulations were recently updated in September to add another layer of responsibility even for unforeseen situations where airlines should be refunding passengers even because of weather stated Minister Al Gabras, who before the rules were only when situations were out of, uh, were in the control of the airline company. And then the airlines always found a reason to say, well, this was not on our, not in our, under our control because mm-hmm. and that there would be a dispute and then it would take months to resolve. And those eight people on the panel had to resol- resolve that. So in September, uh, there was a recognition that there are situations even that have weather where it could still be the fault of the airline because they didn't plan their resources, for example. Because, I mean, this is Canada. It's not like we're not used to weather. Yeah, we, we have it here frequently, like every year at this time, you know. Right. Figure. And you'd think that there would be some base protocols and base consent contingencies and plans for when we do have weather because we do have it. Well, kind of like the LRT in Ottawa that, that uh, almost shut down completely yesterday because it was cold. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just, you know. I can understand that you don't necessarily have big contingencies if you like get weather once every five or six years. You don't really, but when you You're get Florida weather, or like, Texas, right? A year. Yeah. <laughs> you know? This is not, oh, I can't believe it's so cold out. Really? In winter in Canada, this thing that we have every year, you can't believe it's that cold out today. Maybe you should reframe how you state it and go, wow, it's really cold out today. You need right. to believe it because it happens every year. Right, and if it stops happening, we have much bigger problems because much of the the world will be underwater at that point, right? Right. Um, so, as we were saying previously, airlines were only required to provide refunds if a flight disruption was within their control. But the new rules meant that even if the flight was disrupted by weather or outside circumstances, airlines would be required to provide a passenger affected by cancellation or a lengthy delay due to a situation outside the airline's control with a confirmed reservation on the next available flight that is operated by them or a partner airline, leaving Mm. within 48 hours of the departure time indicated on the passenger's original ticket. If the airline cannot provide a confirmed reservation within this 40-hour period, 48-hour period, it is required to provide, at the passenger's choice, a refund or rebooking, and that should be automatic. Not sure that happened. Not sure that happened over the holidays. 
Currently, it's up to the passengers to make the request, and if the request is rejected, then to follow up with a complaint to the Canadian Transportation Agency, and then the agency must rule that the airline didn't apply the rule correctly. So the onus is on the passenger currently Great. to prove all of that. Right. Yes, because so we have so much spare time in our busy lives that we can do that. Right. Like how much time does it take to plan a vacation to begin with, right? right. And if you're like me, you'll go on the, the, the websites every day and look for, keep shopping for the cheapest flight you can get. Because I don't know if you've noticed, they've gone way the hell up since the, oh, yeah. end, since yeah. the end of shutdowns. Yes. Because the yes. pandemic's still ongoing. But the yes. flight costs have gone way up. Like they, in some place, cases doubled or tripled. So it's like... Okay, they're just trying to make up for lost income, but didn't we subsidize them the whole time when they were not flying? Yeah, yep. we did. Yep. We did. And and here's the big problem, and I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here, so bear with right. me for a we'll few minutes. It's, it's not angry. Oh, uh, it's, it's based on fact. It's based on things that are actually happening, and I think we're headed for a 1929-style crash. And I say this because there are so many companies that manipulate the market by doing simple things, like they're they're – Senior VPs, CEOs, senior management uh, get a performance basis, uh, a, a performance pay based on a performance bonus pay based on stock performance. So what these companies will do is they will tank the stock before the end of the quarter and then buy back a whole bunch of shares as people are selling them. They will get the, they will get the share price to drop. There's market manipulations that they can do this with, okay? And, and I'm not an economist or, or a, I'm not that smart, but I do understand how a lot of things work. And the thing is this, what they will do is tank their own stock, buy a ton of it back, raising the price, getting their bonuses, because all they care about is shareholder return each quarter. The issue and the problem is, is they continue to do this. They slice and dice when it comes to personnel, pay, benefits, so on and so forth, because they have to return, uh, 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 they have to beat last year's return. So if last year they had a 20% profit, this year it's got to be a 25% profit and so on and so forth. And they keep bringing it up and up and up and up and up. And what happens is, as we saw at Christmas time, they, they, they cut to the bone on staff. They pay staff horribly. They treat them horribly. People are sick and coming into work because they don't have sick leave. And all it does is it makes these greedy assholes, because that's what they are, it makes them create a system that they're going to destroy. They're cutting off the no their own nose to spite their face. They're cutting out their own legs from underneath them. We are headed for a recession unlike anything we've seen since 1929 because of greed. And that's my morning rant. I wish I had some organ music to like play under that. <laughs> I'll arrange for that next time. <laughs> but I mean, I, please, somebody in the Great chat, brother, somebody on email, tell me if I'm way off base because I've been watching the trends. I do pay attention to these things. And I've spoken to people in powerful positions in, in companies that have said, I agree with you. That's a problem. They continue to do this because they have to return a larger percentage each quarter. Well, eventually you're going to run out of profit because once you're maxed out at a hundred percent, then what? Right. And because slavery is not a thing that's actually legal, except we have a legalized version of it today. It's called the minimum wage mm -hmm. because believe it or not, it is cheaper to pay somebody a, the current minimum wage than it would be to actually own a slave. I know that sounds terrible, but bear, bear this out. You're not paying for their housing or their food, or any medical coverage, or any prescription drugs. You're giving them a, a, not even a modest wage, a less than livable wage, and you usually try and keep them under 30 hours so they're not full time. This is, this is a form of slavery, whether you realize it or not. Maybe they're not beating them with a whip, but they are held, they're, they're handcuffed to the job. Because well, they yeah. have to keep a roof over their heads and they they're struggling beat, to do it. They didn't beat them with a whip, but they sure uh, compacted them into the meat plants while people were coughing and dying. Sorry, I need to have some tea. Yes. Uh... Sorry. <clears throat> 
And again, I just, like I said, I'm not an economist. I'm not that smart, but I can, I can see things. I can see where it's pointing. I see the direction things are going. Yeah. And you have doom and gloom everywhere and greed is going to kill us. It's going to well, kill I mean, us. Yes. I mean, and, and not to like to bring a big dark cloud on the thing because we like to be optimist people, but I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, optimism without any realism is delusion. Correct. Right. Uh, the, the climate situation is not getting better before it gets worse. Nope. Right. So food supply chains, you know, I remember, you know, writing on my blog about five, six years ago that, you know, we are going to have mass migration issues and asylum issues due to climate with, you know, riverbeds drying up and, you know, you know, throughout Europe this past summer and all that type of stuff. And people were laughing Mm -hmm. five, 10 years ago when people were saying, yeah, right. And then it happened this past summer. Right. We're, we're, we're seeing. They just predicted that within five years, the Great Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake in the United States may be dry. Wow. There are rivers in in Reno, like in, in Nevada, where the lake beds have dried up so much, they are finding old cars and bodies. Lake Havasu, just outside of Las Vegas, which was a man-made lake for a reservoir. They're found, they're, you can walk on the lake bed. Oh, look, there's a body. There's a body. There's a car. There's a boat. All kinds of stuff. So greed will kill us. I have a find. I have a feeling that we will find Jimmy Hoffa eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, this I like Linda's Linda's comment. It will kill us. It won't kill them, and that's all they care about. Yes, because they're right. have their their, their self sustained you know bunker, medically sealed pods with you yeah. know fresh air and like this. Well, we saw that at the World Economic Forum, right? Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. are sitting down like this, and they got their little thing with the helper filter next to them, and they all have their pre-testing things to go and all all the things that the business is saying. Yeah, we need to cut that stuff up for like people well, like this. We don't need to be that like this. They're all treating themselves to it though. Still, yeah. Well, they, we're just human capital. We're cattle to them. We are serfs in a feudal state. Don't kid yourselves. Take they're telling us history. we don't need them, but they're still using them on them for, on themselves. Yeah. Oh, you don't need this, but I'm just gonna as a precaution, I'll, I'll hang on to it. But you. You don't need it. You don't need it. You're, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Have I heard that? Yeah, exactly. Um, I need to make a note. Somebody make a note to. Um, although I, last time I asked somebody to make a note to tell me to remind something about alcohol, and I still don't remember what it is that thing I wanted to say about alcohol. Because they went for a drink. <laughs> went for a drink instead. Uh, but yes, there are, um, uh, just quick mention, uh, the US and the UK have both announced that they are going to cut back on their COVID funding stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like the United States is going to stop, uh, declare the state of emergency and the public health state of emergency over, which will stop funding uh, for testing and those types of things, uh, they're going to try to still keep funding vaccines. Um, but uh, again, we're just like taking away another layer again, as cases are rising in China as you know, it's just like, I understand that like, this is the thing is if things aren't going, aren't very bad in one region, then you start to take away your genetic sequencing testing and taking away your, this eventually if another wave hits, then you don't have the resources there because you've pulled them. Right. So you've, you've stopped collecting the data. Uh, so he was like, yeah. and the UK is about to, to make a similar uh, declaration as well. So that's on those things, but that's a whole other subject. Um, so as we were mentioning about uh, the storms and the, the airline passengers and things, uh, it's up to the passengers to make the request. And if rejected, you follow up with a complaint to the transportation Canadian Transportation Agency, and then the agency must rule that the airline didn't apply the rule correctly, which puts the onus on you as the passenger. And as you're asking who has time to do that, you know, and if you're considering like the typical person, as we always say, you know, married with 2.4 children and a mortgage or, you know, or rent to make and uh, and a pet, uh, you know, working unpaid overtime probably, mm-hmm. um, you know, stuck in an hour commute on the way there and an hour commute on the way back. Uh, you got no time. You got no time. That's one of the reasons for which we're doing this show. 
for example, because you don't necessarily have time to keep track of everything that's going on ins and outs and back doors exactly. and behind in the hallways of politics. So I listen to all of this and, you know, I try to distill it down so that you who are busy living your life and taking care of your children, taking care of yourself, taking care of your parents, sometimes taking care of all three <laughs> at the same time, children's and parents and yourself, uh, you don't have time like this, but you still want to be informed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot going on. There's a big world. Well, here's a, uh, regarding COVID from Ellen, H5N1 is the next threat. And apparently that is a very high mortality rate of 50, 59%, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd have to double check the, the facts to get that correct, but it's a very high mortality rate. So it's like we're getting threats from all over. So, you know, again, we're optimistic, but we're also realists. Right. So let's try and smile and be as happy as we can be considering this current state of the world. Yeah. Yeah. You can and with that, I'm going to get a coffee. I'll be right back. All right. Um, proposed changes to the passengers' bills of rights are to make it easier for staff to make routine decisions, as we mentioned, to place the cost of adjudicating decisions onto the airlines themselves as a matter of incentivizing them to take action, thus increasing and increasing the funding to the agency. I like that second one, to place the cost of adjudicating, adjudicating decisions onto the airlines themselves as a matter of incentivizing them. If you have to pay for the adjudication, then you probably won't fight every single claim. You'll be a little more judicious about the ones you decide to uh, challenge um the comment uh, commons transit committee had heard uh from via when they came in to testify that the the situation of a train being stranded for 18 hours was an outlier the chief of customer service uh for via stated in his testimony given the protracted delay given the lack of clear information that we're, we were able to garner we heard there was misinformation we offered the passengers we exacerbated the level of anxiety of those passengers on board and that's on us for not properly and clearly communicating what we are doing and reassuring them um, now this is very very nice that you hear these types of statements yes but they don't mean much if they don't have a policy follow through the mea culpa my bad i mean some companies don't even do that so i mean already there that's not so bad but just like an apology if somebody apologizes but then goes back and repeats the offending behavior then the apology means nothing so here okay you've taken ownership but unless you're going to make some policy decisions and some corporate changes then the taking ownership means nothing um other things that uh, managed uh Things that that were like revealed in the community in the committee that had happened is, uh, for example, some of the airports had run out of deicer fluid. Oh, great! Again, not sure how that happens in a country where you have weather. Uh, they had all the baggage fiascos. Uh, s some actually just ran out of fuel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, can't take off. And uh, whereas the passenger bills of rights does apply to airline travel, it does not apply to federally regulated rail travel yet. So that might be something that will be added uh, into the bill in order to cover rail as well. Um, there you go. Fifty nine percent is the number for H one H five H wait what is it H five N one whatever it is you know. Fifty nine percent of what mortality rate. Whoa. Yeah, okay. no, it's sky high. It's sky that high. Sky high. Oh, good morning, uh, Pete. I guess, yeah, it's morning there because it's after midnight, right? So it would be I morning. I believe there, so, technically. yes. Yeah. Good morning, Kit Pete. Lovely to see you. Uh, good morning, Kit Ellen Humphrey. Thank you for joining us today. It was so lovely to see you as well. Um, starting February, uh, Sudwing uh, then canceled the majority of its flight. So flights were canceled until out of Regina and Saskatoon up, up until the third originally. And then they announced uh, that they were canceling the majority of its flights out of Regina starting February 4th. So that has been extended for the remainder of the winter travel season. Ouch. And they still cannot explain why specifically Saskatchewan. <laughs> and nowhere else. Uh, some family day weekend departures will go as planned. Uh, option to transfer to departures from other airports. Uh, so they're going to offer people the option to transfer to departures from other airports, I guess, like Winnipeg or Calgary. When is, when is family day? 
I have to uh, work it so it doesn't make a difference to me. It's the third Monday in February, is it? Or second? I thought it was the second. Either I got to work. Yes, second so Monday in February. Second Monday in February, yes. Because mm, um, I'm, I'm my, my employer, everybody gets it off in Ontario for the company that I work for. But because I'm tasked out to a crown corp. Right. I'm still private sector, but I work for a crown corp, so I have to work. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, uh, and Sunwing then proceeded to over the over the days to cancel additional flights out of Halifax, Fredericton, Moncton, Sudbury, and North Bay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, not the best, not nope. the best. Yes, and then of course there was, um, you know, more testimony over the course uh, of those weeks. Um, I'm not sure what's really going to come out of it. I'm not sure really what the committee found out. I mean, the problems seem to be rather obvious. I mean, it was, it was a logistical nightmare, yes, and there wasn't enough planning and there wasn't enough contingency and built-in redundancy. Like I said, the lack of slack in the system. You have to build some slack in the system in case something goes wrong somewhere that you can pull from somewhere. Um you know, mm-hmm. the, the company that uh, Sunwing that was looking at uh, hiring the foreign pilots, apparently they found out uh, a decent amount of time. I would say a decent amount of time uh, beforehand uh, that they were not going to get those pilots. I believe they were applying, uh, there were some, it was pilots uh, applying on uh, temporary foreign work visas to come and help. And uh, they were told in early December, I believe, that those uh, applications were not going to be approved. And rather than canceling some flights at that time or rerouting some things, they basically tried to change the schedules to make the limited amount of pilots that they had still be able to deliver all the flights. That's where they lost the slack in the system. Mm-hmm. One one flight just needs to be delayed two three hours, and that can you know it affects the next flight and the next flight, and you know, and then you know if a crew has done more than its eight hours or whatnot, then that crew cannot because of union rules. You know, go to the next flight, and then they got to find another crew and bring in, and then there's more delays and. So, and then it snowballs. It, it can snowball very, very, very quickly. Oh, yeah. So I'm not, um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what happens after this, what could be the possible next steps. Um, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's been a mess for a while. Now, with, uh, as we mentioned before, at the passport, at least outside of the airports at the passports, uh, things have been resolved. Um, they're back to a service within 10 days and all of that. And uh, we had uh, Minister Karina Gold to uh, come out and uh, make the, that announcement. Uh, and I really like her. She doesn't get enough uh, airtime. And I know she's with you know, families and children and that type of stuff. And right. you know that, that minister typically doesn't get a lot of airtime anyway because there's you know, always a minister of health above and beyond there's always a minister of uh, you know justice above and beyond whatnot that can talk to all you know t- to other issues regarding families and children and you know community development and stuff but uh, she's she's very good and she's a very effective speaker uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cabinet shuffle at some point along the row along the way that she gets a promotion up mm-hmm. I guess but we don't get to see a lot of her uh, and and, pl- and she's just there's something about her. There's a warmth about her and a kindness about her uh, when she speaks. That's uh, very appealing. Um, this she just you know, I, I watch clips when she does them and like and she gets there and she just like she you know she smiles goes hi and she, she starts talking and there's just just like yeah okay I want to hear what you have to say. She just sounds she sounds like a person that I. I know it doesn't matter in politics. They keep on the, uh, that beer test. You know, who's someone that you want to have a beer with? I would love to have a right. dinner with like okay. this. I think it would be a very, very wonderful evening of just, you know, very stimulating conversation and good company. She seems like a decent person. I, I, I just get a good vibe off her. Um, do you have anything for us, Mr. Grizzly? 
that's about uh, all I think I have noted on the, the storm thing. Oh, there was one thing I did note, however, that, that wasn't related to us. But apparently, while we were going through our stuff, there was stuff similarly going on in Japan. They had been oh, having yeah. really bad weather from early December. Mm-hmm. And while we were having the worst of our storm over there, apparently there was a uh, senior citizen lady, I believe she was in her 70s, walking down the street. And you know how sometimes there's lots of snow that accumulates on a roof and then it just slides off? Mm-hmm. She got buried, Apparently there was about two feet of accumulation of snow on some roofs when she was passing by and it just fell off and she got crushed under it and died. Wow. Well, that's tragic. Yeah. That's truly so, tragic. Yeah. And it's like, but while we were getting all of that then California was getting <laughs> more rain in like three days than it had caught in the last three years. Mm. Yeah. So, and, and, well, they've the been under drought for so long. long. Right. Yeah, because it was baked like cement at that point, right? Right, right. So it's just, oh, weather, weather, weather. And I'm My starting God, to it's think, everywhere. I know, but I'm starting to think, you know, it's like, it's almost like a matter of time. It's not, mm. it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. It's when. One it's of when. us is going to be oh, yeah. hit by some weather event that is going to damage our homes in some way. I just... Mm. I know it, it sounds gloomy and dark, <laughs> but, it's, but it's it's it just it just seems at the at this uh, at this time that that's what's it's going to be. Um, it's it's just going to happen eventually. Yeah, You're, everybody's just going to have to prepare for at least once in their life having to start over. So I I, I came across this the other day. This quote uh, I came across it online, and it's a quote from a song written in the '70s, and it was a big hit song by a band that. One particular record, I think all of us at one point in time in the 70s had in somebody's wood paneled basement. And it's not Peter Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive. Everybody had that one too. That was issued in the suburbs like boxes of Tide that used to show up in the mail. But this was from a, a young fellow who, who said, you know, somebody said, we want to go back to the 70s when people weren't so woke and stupid and weren't trying to do all these crazy left wing stupid things and the guy says yeah let me yeah let's go back to the 70s and here's a quotation from a famous song by the steve miller band i want to feed the babies who can't get enough to eat i want to shoe the children with no shoes on their feet i want to house the people living in the street oh yeah there's a solution let me fly like an eagle to the sea fly like an eagle let that spirit carry me i want to fly oh yeah fly right into the future so uh wokeness has been around for a very long time friends that is a great lyric too, and and I want to feed the babies who can't get enough to eat, shoe the children who with no shoes on their feet. How's the people living in the street? Oh yeah, there's a solution. There is. It's stop being greedy assholes. Simple as that. There, there is no need for poverty to exist. Money is a concept that was developed to control us. Money isn't real. You can't eat it. I mean, look, we're, we're the only species that lives on this planet that pays to live here. <laughs> right? Now, am I saying we should be hunter-gatherers? No, but come on. There's got to be a better way. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? No. No, it's not going to. But someday money will be gone if there's still a planet and still people, that is. Mm-hmm. Because eventually it's not, it's not going to make any sense. When all the jobs disappear to AI and bots, and it is going to happen. When, I don't know, but we're seeing the erosion, like coal miners and oil field workers. Their jobs are being taken away by automation. Truckers will soon be starting to lose their job as big companies don't want to pay people when they can buy an automated truck to do the long haul from Toronto to Ottawa or whatever the case may be. Now, you might have a local guy who will will get in the truck and deliver it, but mm, it'll it'll show up at a big Amazon-type warehouse like their fulfillment centers, which are gigantic. There's two of them here in Ottawa, and they're massive buildings. Right. One in the East End, one in the S. They'll drive the truck to there, and then maybe they'll have a delivery driver from there to drop off the goods, or maybe what will really happen is they'll have an automated system that will deliver the goods to you and have a bot that will carry it to your front door. You think I'm being ridiculous? They're already working on this crap. Hmm. These jobs that exist right now to do this will be gone in 10 years' time. Oh, Mark absolutely. my words. Mark my words. I'm telling you, it's, it's coming. It's happening. The technology exists. It's here. It's real. 
what are we going to do? UBI. That's the solution. Yeah. Like I said many times before, my buddy who writes code says in five years he won't have a job. He's retiring in two, so it doesn't matter. But he says in five years my job won't exist because the machine learning that we are coding right now, they will write their own software. AI writes yeah, its own software. Yeah, and that would probably be, be true for you know what I was doing in translation. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because it's getting better all the time, right? Yeah. It's rapidly improving. And some of the uh, the GP, was it GP chat or chat GP or whatever it is? Yeah. You, you, can, you can put it, you can go to that and say, listen, uh, write me up a resume on this person. Um, this is the person's name. It'll go in and it'll find the person, find their qualifications, write the resume, and it'll be better than anything you could ever write because it will find things that you've completely forgotten about. So mm -hmm. it's happening right now. And a lot of the uh, automated voice message systems that you meet, you're not even talking to a person. You're talking to an AI chatbot, and they're good, and they're believable. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get a UBI soon, we're going to have big, big problems. And I don't want to hear one more a-hole tell me people don't want to work anymore. It's not the case. People don't want to work for shit wages under terrible conditions. That's what people don't want to do. People don't want to be abused. People want to have a quality of life. They want to join the middle class. And that's right. not asking much. It's not. Just want to be able to, you know, live a good life. Everybody has their different opinion on what a good life is, but what am I to say? Uh, my life's pretty good, but I'm broke as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hear you, friend. Hey, friend. Well, um, I mean, the money, got, the, 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 the money I lost during the shutdown and then the subsequent restart, I will never regain. I mean, a couple right. of months off work and then six months we were back at work at 80% wages with no vehicle allowance. I had to get it. I need a vehicle for my job. I don't now, but I did then. So I had to lease a new vehicle because my old vehicle died. So I leased a new vehicle on January 30th of 2020. And then the world shut down. I still have to pay for it. So, you know, once I can eliminate that expense, life will uh, improve for me dramatically. But that's just how it goes sometimes, you know. You, you got to do what you got to do to keep, uh, keep earning enough money to, to not starve and, and live in the street. Yep. It's tough. It's a tough world out there. But it don't is. worry. Be happy. Yes. Well, you know, you got to make lemonade, right? Yeah, well, that's my buddy has a sign on his wall. It says, when life gives you lemons, hey, keep them. Free lemons. Right. Um, Have you seen got the price couple... of lemons? <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeez. A um, couple of updates on um, quick updates, just various little facts and things that I picked up on some stories that we've covered uh, lately, um, just to get you know, let you know uh, how things have progressed. Um, with regard, uh, or just additional details to fill in some blanks and add some color and texture. Um, we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago about uh, the Prime Minister making a visit to Saskatchewan and deciding that he was not going to let Premier Mo know that he was going to show up uh, to make a really, really big important announcement with regard to critical minerals. Mm. Uh, just uh, And um, um, Scott Mo was quoted as saying in response to this, uh, it, it isn't a personal slight in any way that is bothersome to me. What's bothersome to me and why I'm disappointed is there's a real opportunity today, I think, to have a very brief conversation about what is attracting investments like vital metals to Saskatoon. <laughs> a very brief conversation. Okay. <laughs> It's, seriously, it's like, why would you go to the media and say, I'm disappointed because we did not have an opportunity to have a very brief conversation about what is attracting investments like vital metals? Pick up the phone. And it's just, it's like, he's going to be there like for the whole morning or three quarters of the day is like this, right? Like to have a fulsome, to have a full throated discussion to have a an impassioned to have to to dig, dive down deep it's like i missed an opportunity to have a very like pick up a freaking phone 
always the victim and they call me the snowflake. <laughs> Jeez. Apparently, Scott Moe found out in the papers <laughs> that the prime minister had been there. Oh, oopsie. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to keep something secret in government? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Damn near impossible. <laughs> uh, apparently, afterwards, there was a phone call from the prime minister's office by which we all got an apology. Mm. <laughs> I like spicy and saucy Trudeau. And I believe it was the day after that that uh, Scott Moe then came to the cameras and said that, uh, yeah, I, you know, maybe those conditions on that health deal wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> uh, of course, they're having a meeting on that health thing on the 7th at which the prime minister is going to be. Uh, now, originally, when they were talking about that, they were saying that they needed to have a meeting, but it wasn't very clear that the prime minister was going to be there because, and the prime minister said this, uh, apparently it was very well understood very well understood and very clearly stated to all the premiers that the prime minister would only come to a meeting with all the premiers on health if a deal was at hand or if it was going to be something serious where work was actually going to get done. So if it was to him for him to come down, come down to a room uh, at the Palm View Motel, <laughs> they, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. You got me. My, my mouth was open. My mouth was open. He was not going to show up <laughs> for that one. So it looks like he is going to uh, come to that one. So now he's tempering expectations. Don't expect an actual full deal to be announced at this one. But it looks like they've made enough serious progress that they are actually going to be having an actual working meeting on this one. So there you go. Let's see what happens from that. Uh, tidbit of interesting news. Uh, the Church of England will now allow its clergy to bless same-sex marriages. What, what took them so long? But we're still in a little bit of separate, but not separate, but not exactly equal. Mm -hmm. uh, marriage ceremonies still cannot be performed within the church building. So your union oh. can be blessed, but you still can't have the marriage ceremony in the church do, do we need to remind them we're in the 21st century and that love is love do we need to remind them yeah do, I, do yeah. I have to do i have to put on my blue jacket and take it to the streets because jesus christ people but in one way yes and in another way it's a step right it's like it's one of those things right if somebody's willing to make yes. a step if you take the outstretched hand and you just slap them and say not good enough uh, you know what i completely agree Com i completely agree i just but I'm but, tired. I'm tired. But, I'm tired too because, but back in the day, I remember, remember when we were talking about civil unions? Mm -hmm. it's like, no, no, you don't need marriage. We'll just do civil unions. So we'll mm -hmm. call it something else and we'll have a couple of things that are different to make so it's not exactly the same, but that should do you. Well, it, right? I heard people with and the it's argument. Like, and some people were okay at first. You know what? It's mm -hmm. a step. We'll take civil unions and then we'll go from there. And then some we'll countries did that and then they got marriage and like this. But it was like, but. The original intent was probably to say, you know what, they're really not going to stop asking for this, so let's create this thing that's not exactly like this, but something like this so that we can still have this and they're not going to take it from us. Mm. Well, uh, um, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the things, like, you're right, they've offered I, you this, don't slap the hand away. I, I completely agree. It's more than what you have. But it is, it is frustrating. Because but it's not equality. It, no, it's not equality. Uh, no freedom till we're equal, right? Damn right, I support it. Um, it's it, more it, equal, but it's not equal. <laughs> it's not equal. And and I, I couldn't understand the people who got bent out of shape going like, well, we don't want to call it a marriage because that's an infringement upon what? On what? Your marriage? Maybe your marriage is a little fragile if you can't handle two people of the same sex getting married. If Anybody you feel that is a threat... Married? Anybody else getting married anywhere in the world under any circumstances or conditions has no bearing on yours. None. Zero. None. And then, of course, the other mic, what's next? They're going to marry animals? Yes, because that's clearly the next step. Jesus Christ, people. Yes, that's clearly what we've been asking for all along, yeah, right? All like along. Yeah. Same-sex marriage is just the gateway drug to be able, like, you know, to, you know, propose to Fifi. 
Fucking people. Hey. <laughs> Other news uh, in the category of Joan Crawford's dead. Good. Um, mm. Diamond and Silk. You know them? Or yeah, as yeah, I call them? That was a while ago. Yeah, as I call them, cubic zirconia and polyester. Yes. Uh, well, one of sisters. the two sisters, yeah. yeah, one of the two passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, Diamond from COVID. Yes. Well, is it from COVID? It's yeah, no, it was assumed. COVID. It was she COVID. Was, well, she was never vaccinated, and she had COVID. She was hospitalized for quite some time and died at home. But did they say that she had COVID? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I thought yeah. they were they were calling it something else. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, she passed away, and apparently, they invited. Um, <laughs> Pre- former president pumpkin head <laughs> to yeah. the funeral and apparently he delivered the eulogy and apparently apparently well not apparently he did during the eulogy during the eulogy i've never been on live before but apparently sometimes apparently I don't watch, apparently i don't watch the news because i'm a kid and apparently every time Grandpa just gives me a remote after he watched the Powerball. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well, apparently Trump was at the funeral and apparently he was giving the eulogy and apparently during the eulogy he said, I knew Diamond but I didn't know Silk at all. Who was standing right beside him and there's photos of them together. Several and photos of them together. It's like where there is They're never Diamond, apart. Where is Silk? <laughs> Now, which which one of which one of those? Uh, so he, the T, TFG, the former guy, is always saying, uh, "Sleepy Joe, who's got uh, he's going senile." I'm like, dude, you said you didn't meet this woman. That we have lots of photos of you with her. The two of them were never apart. I but think like, your faculties may be slipping away too. How do you like? How do you talk about two people who are literally joined at the hip? Everywhere one goes, the yeah. other one is there. And it's like, like you said, it's like, yeah, I was like. Okay, there's a person here. There's a person here. It's like, hi, I'm having a conversation only with you for the next five years, and you, I don't know at all. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking reality. That's, and could you imagine being silk at the funeral? Like everybody's there, and it's all a funeral, and it's like, I was like, oh yeah, your sister, she was wonderful, and she contributed everything, and she did all these. Never good met stuff. you. Never, Never met, met you. you. No, no, who the fuck you are? <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, I mean, it's like, oh my god. And you know that she's just going to come back out like this and still shill for him rather than say, you motherfucker. <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh, man. Uh, another thing uh, you probably heard in the news, also in the United States, uh, about a school shooting in Newport where there was a six-year-old, apparently, who came to school with a gun and shot his teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happened. Yes. Uh, school administrators it seems were warned three times during that day about the presence of the gun. The, Pardon, sir. Sorry, you, you, you froze that this, this was going to happen, right? They knew. Well, they, not that this was going to happen, gonna but happen. that there was a child at school with a gun because mm. the child had shown it to another student and threatened that student. Right. If you tell, I will kill you. Uh, and that student did tell. So, the student saw something, said something, and then mm-hmm. this is what the adults did. The adults heard about the presence of the gun at 11.15 in the morning, about an hour later, and then at around 1 p.m., right? The child told the teacher that the gun had been shown to them. They'd been threatened if they told. Someone volunteered to actually check out the situation and came back with a report that, yeah, nobody should worry about it because it's close to the end of the school day, and you know, and let's not make a case about it. And mm. then the kid got into some type of argument with one of the teacher and then pulled out the gun and shot. And then she put her hand out and the bullet apparently went through her hand and into her chest. <sighs> so shades of Uvalde. The yeah. adults knew, the adults were warned, the adults knew that something was coming and then they did nothing. Tots and pears, tots and pears. <sighs> People. Uh, in the United States, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, has voted to make the bivalent COVID booster the default vaccine. I don't know if a similar decision is coming from Health Canada. I would suppose that it is. Uh, so the uh, basically uh, original vaccine 
is going to be uh, slowly retired and replaced with uh, the bivalent booster because it already has everything from the original vaccine and then the bivalent one for the Omicron variant. So basically the original ones are essentially obsolete at the moment. Um, mm. We spoke yesterday. Did you hear, Did you hear this? Medicago. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Medicago. Uh, Medicago was the the vaccine, the Quebec-based uh, company that had uh, come up with a plant-based vaccine that you keep on asking me if it was vegan. And I still was it vegan? Been, still haven't been able to certify that. Uh, uh, but we're not able to get approval from the World Health Organization to have it distributed internationally because it had an association with Philip Morris Tobacco Company and the World Health Organization. Pardon? Pardon me, Squeezie? Cigarette manufacturer. Yeah, cigarette manufacturer. And uh, the World Health Organization has a standing policy of not accepting any help whatsoever with regard to health from cigarette manufacturing companies. And therefore, we're requiring that Medicago stop its association with Philip Morris in order to approve the vaccine. A couple of months ago, Philip Morris did announce in Medicago, together had announced that Philip Morris had divested itself from Medicago. Uh, so it looked like this vaccine was about to go to head, go ahead, but it seems that Medicago now has... Uh, Ceased operations. Well, it's Mitsubishi owns them. They're the parent company. It's Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi Pharmacy or something like that. It's a pharma- pharmacological drug company uh, and a branch of Mitsubishi the Japanese company that you think, oh yeah, electronics, TV. Uh, they also make backhoes and drilling material and drag lines. And at one point in time, Mitsubishi was the largest company in the world. Uh, it no longer is, but it's still a very big company. The electronics wing for consumer electronics is like that's that's a microcosm of the company. They're they're a very big corporation. Yeah. So, Medicago divested uh, at the end of December. So December 29th is when it uh, made the news uh, that uh, Philip Morris International had divested all its shares from shares of Medicago, which would allow the Kofivens, uh, Kofivens to reach international markets. Um, and as I'm looking through, I'm trying to f- find an article that says why it is that Medicago uh, plan producing. Uh, its sole shareholder decided to no longer invest in the company, which was Japan's based Mitsubishi Chemical Group, as you mentioned, Mr. Grizzly, uh, decided mm-hmm. to, quote, proceed with an orderly wind-up of its business operations in Canada and the United States. Medicago announced the group would be ceasing all operations of the company. The Medicago team has pushed scientific boundaries, and we know that they will continue to make incredible contributions to innovation in the bi- and biopharmaceutical sector. The company said in a statement, spokesperson confirmed to Global News the shutdown will affect 586 jobs in Quebec. Medicago's Kofavins shot was the first Canadian developed COVID-19 vaccine to be approved for use by Health Canada in February of last year. The vaccine also marked the first the world's first ever plant-based jab authorized for human use and was also the first Canadian vaccine of any kind to be approved in over 20 years. Wow. Wow. That part I did not know. Not surprised, though, because Brian Mulroney sold off our remaining um, uh, vaccine manufacturing facilities, right? Right. Because there was no profit in it. Right. That, that was really the reason they sold it. Well, it's costing us money. There's no profit in it. Yeah, some things, some things cost money. Uh, there's not a profit to be made on every single thing. Why can't people understand that? Yeah. yeah. Some things you do because you have to do them. Right. Right. There was no there was no profit in sending man to the moon, but they did it anyway. Yeah. Yep. Medicago is. Please tell me. Please tell me. Like, why don't why don't people seem to understand that concept? Some things are not meant to be profitable. Yeah. Period. Just yeah. Uh, Medicago states that the economic context for the COVID-19 vaccine and the challenges Medicago faces in its transition to commercial production uh, as being some of the reasons that it is pulling its uh, funding. The group considered it viable to continue investing in the commercialization of Medicago's development products and therefore chose to terminate all its activities with Medicago and proceed with an orderly dissolution of its business and activities. Uh, The group is also reviewing the impact the decision will have. 
Uh, the director of the Mitsubishi Chemical Group said in an email to Global News that the development of the Kofi Vance vaccine will be discontinued entirely. In addition, the construction of a new 90,000 square meter facility and headquarters in Quebec City will, will, stop, will be stopped and appropriate arrangements, including the property sale, will be considered in the winding down process. In 2020, Medicago had received $173 million from the federal government for facility construction and research and development of the vaccine. Laurie Bouchard, a spokesperson for the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, Philippe, François-Philippe Chapin, said that the government is disappointed, quote, recognizing the impacts this decision will have on their employees, we continue to be in discussion with the mm-hmm. government of Quebec to assess next steps. Medicago's contribution to Canada's biomanufacturing and life sciences ecosystem is important because of their innovative plant-based vaccine technology. So hopefully there will be people within the government of Canada that will try to find a way to at least keep the technological benefit of some kind. Uh, Otherwise, we'll get another brain drain. Yeah. And they'll get siphoned off to another country that's willing to pay them more money. And I'm thinking, which country might that Mm -hmm. be? Which country would be? Whatever. It's a short list. Uh, Because this is a very innovative technology. And it could probably be used mm-hmm. for many other, you know, many other types of vaccines. Um, Minister of Health Jean-Yves Duclos stated, Our first thought is for the workers in the region and their families. My Canadian government colleagues and I will work with the government of Quebec and economic leaders in the region, particularly those in the life sciences, to protect Canada's interests and those of the workers and to identify options for the future. Uh, additionally, he said his constituency team will also be at the service of workers from Medicago for any type of assistance they may wish to seek from the Canadian government. And Quebec's Minister of Infrastructure, Jonathan Julien, said his thoughts are with the employees and their families who are experiencing the sad consequences of this news. This scientific expertise that Medicago has built up is invaluable, and I am confident that the know-how of the staff will quickly find its place in Quebec. So there you go. Um, there you go. Yeah, that's pretty sad. That breaks my heart. Yeah, I, and, and I, I've you know, it's if it's not profitable, so let's get rid of it. That's what it boils down to, right? Yeah. Um, the deed is not. What did I say more. earlier? If they can't, if if they can't increase their margin every quarter, cut to the bone. So now people are unemployed because they weren't turning enough of a profit because the shareholders got angry that they weren't getting a large dividend check every quarter. So let's just cut that whole division. Almost 600 people out of work. Yeah, whatever. Don't they'll they'll get a package out and they'll be fine. They're smart people. They'll land on their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably true for some, not for all. Some people won't land on their feet because they will suffer mental health issues. Because all of a sudden, their uh, reason for being doesn't exist anymore. There will be few people that that will happen to. I know. I've been there. When you suddenly find yourself unemployed, it can be a real kick in the teeth to your mental mm-hmm. health. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, it does. It really affects the self-worth. It yeah, does. Indeed. And I mean, there are some people that their only identity is what they do. Me, well, whatever. I do what I do. I'm, my identity is other things. But some people only identify with what they do. And you can make a comment on whether that's healthy or unhealthy or whatever the case may be. I'm not going to debate that. I'm talking about how these people are going to suffer because all of a sudden they don't have a job. Microsoft's laid off 10,000 people. Google laid off several thousand people. Amazon's laying off people left, right, and center. And all of it has to do with, well, our, our uh, profit margin's down. Well, guess what? Guess yeah. what? Well, it's not only profit margin being down, is that they overestimated what the future was mm-hmm. going to require. And they just went slap happy on hiring. And now they got to pull the rug out of under, under people who thought that, you know, they had some security. Well, but they say, it's time to tighten our belts, except, you know, who's not tightening the belts? Right. <laughs> CEOs and senior management. They never no, tighten no. the belt. They tighten they your, your belt. belt. Yes. Yes. I still got to get my quarterly bonus. Greed will kill us all. Oh, man, I tell you, there's this uh, song by uh, the Pet Shop Boys uh, on their album Alternative. West End no, Girls? Uh, on their album Alternative. Uh, called what okay. uh, keeps 
Hand Alive. It's a it's one of those uh, albums where they they do a res- retrospective of some of their songs and then put some remix versions of that type of stuff and then some on you know some versions of songs that uh, weren't released. Uh, but it's a song from the Pet Shop Boys called "What Keeps Mankind Alive" and it's based on. Um, uh, Bertold Brecht poem, and uh, I believe Tom Waits had done a version of it uh, earlier. Uh, but this one mm-hmm. is sort of like a, uh, how would I put it, a um, more dancey techno version, <laughs> because you know it's Pet okay. Shop Boys, right? Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, um, you gentlemen who think you have a mission to purchase of the seven deadly sins should first sort out the basic food position, then start your preaching. That's where it begins. And the chorus goes, what keeps mankind alive? The fact that millions are daily tortured, stifled, punished, silenced, depressed. Mankind can keep alive thanks to its brilliance at keeping its humanity repressed. For once, you must not try to shirk the facts. Mankind is kept alive by bestial acts. Hmm. Mm. And this is why we have poetry to the kids, because in very few words, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can deliver a punch right to the mouth. <laughs> okay, a couple of other quick updates before we close up, because we're getting to the end of our show, kids. Um, the uh, if you heard this, uh, I'm not sure if this is a Canada thing as well, because. I mean, the girl guide system and brownie system is worldwide. Uh, but it seems that the brownies have changed their names uh, because they were looking at it because they thought it might make the organization unwelcoming to people of certain races. Because, you know, if you call yourself brownies, mm-hmm. being brown myself, I kind of see where that could probably be an issue. Uh, so apparently uh, the two names that were considered were embers and comets, and they have decided to settle on embers. So now brownies are embers. There you go. Oh, that's now cool. you know. Yeah. Um, and and you see all the the white men who the 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 old white men who got butthurt about changing the name. <laughs> I'm like, um, unless you're a young girl, this is no concern to you, right? Shut your pie Shut hole. Your pie hole. Um, George Santos, our favorite liar, if that's your real name, sir. Apparently, again, apparently, uh, Mark, uh, Mark, uh, Kevin McCarthy had appointed him to, as we had a good laugh at this, to the Small Business Committee and Science Committees, House Committees, uh, and pulled Adam Schiff and uh, Saul, Eric Swalwell from the House Intelligence Committee because they weren't honest enough. Uh, it seems that Kevin McCarthy and George Santos had a little meeting in which the story goes, George Santos agreed to no longer sit on those committees. He has been pulled from the two. Uh, Because we found out other things. Apparently, he might also have some criminal uh, issues with the Federal Elections Committee. Apparently, when he was filing his receipts, the rules are that receipts over $200 need to be filed. And apparently, he's filed something like 40 receipts for $199.99. Oh, so he's trying to screw the <laughs> They kind of noticed that over half of the receipts <laughs> that you submitted were for $199. It's like, you got to be subtle about this thing, biatch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like... Um, and apparently he's changed, uh, some, his attestation when he did his federal election commission filings, because apparently, uh, there was like $750,000 or a certain amount of money that was transferred into his campaign. And he said he financed it himself, even though he never really had a job that paid him over $55,000 a year prior to that. Mm. Uh, it seems that some of that money may have come from our USSIA. <laughs> so, yeah. what, what's that Russia. now? Some, oh, oh, R-U-I-S-S-A. I didn't hear the R. I just heard USSIA. I'm yep. like, I don't know what that is. Asia? Yep. I don't know what that is. Oh, I thought it was an acronym. Russia. So apparently yeah. there's a person in the United States that gave him this money, and this person is the brother of someone in Russia who's very famous, and it seems that that person in the United States, number one 
place where they invest is in his own brother's company. <laughs> See how that works? Uh, so he filed some documents to the Federal Election Committee saying that uh, two loans, one of $500,000 and one of $125,000, did come from his personal funds. Apparently, he revised those documents to now say they did not come from his personal funds. Okay. And when asked about where the money comes from, so he's asked, where does the money come from? And instead of saying where the money comes from, he says, oh, we'll tell you where the money doesn't come from. It doesn't come from China, and it doesn't come from Burisma, and it doesn't come <laughs> so, Yeah, but the question was, where How's does that? the money come that? from? Mr. Too Cute by half. <laughs> You were about to lose your job. You were about to lose your job. Break it down now. You were about to lose your job. <laughs> he going to jail too. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We talked about the price of eggs uh, recently. A little fact. Apparently, 41 of the 60 million birds that have been culled because of the bird flu are egg-laying hens. Mm. That might be explaining why there's a short of of eggs and the prices went up. And uh, finally, we also mentioned uh, the changes in uh, the drinking guidelines. Uh, And just so you know, while the conservatives are losing their mind, uh, the guidelines uh, come with recommendations for standard labeling to help people count their drinks because what's a standard drink? Well, to me, it would be a 20-ounce pint of beer. But that's not necessarily how many the case. Standard, it's, it's usually a right. unit. How many standard and drinks unit, are in a 20 ounce pint of beer? Yeah, that would be two, I believe. I, it I don't know. That's the whole thing. We don't yeah, know. I think, that's what they, I think that's what the unit is 10 alcohol ounces is or, one of, or 250. Alcohol million. is one of the few things in this country that doesn't require any nutritional labeling. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, they're trying to change yeah, that too. That's in the recommendations as well to include like calorie counts and how many uh, standard servings are in this bottle of wine or in this tall boy of beer or in this. So that eight know. ounces. Yeah, it's eight ounces. Eight right? ounces. So if you're drinking a 20 ounce paint, right, you're thinking, you're, okay, I've had my one of my two drinks and <laughs> you've nearly had three. Right. Well, it, there's something to consider too. Like some some beer I drink, uh, Guinness is 4.2 percent alcohol per volume. So in a 20 ounce pint, it's 4.2 percent. There's another beer that I usually is the one I consume when we're doing the the pubcast. It's Flora um, Flora Hall English traditional English bitter, uh, but it's called the Amber Flora Hall Amber Ale at a, at a different pub because the word bitter in in beer would frighten people away who aren't you know anyway knowledgeable uh it's 3.5 percent alcohol and lately i've been drinking zero alcohol beer so what's the ruling on that right because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that would change if it's 3.5 percent alcohol per volume in a 20 ounce pint that's a lot less out al- that's 1.5 percent less than your standard beer which is usually around the five percent mark so that has to change too. Uh, but I do agree that we should be labeling alcohol for nutritional information because they've been doing that in the U.S. for Oh my goodness! Must yeah. be thirty yeah, years. Particular now. calories. Oh, yeah. How many calories yeah. are in your yeah. Cosmo? If you're wondering about that, right? Um, uh, so while the Canadian industry, alcohol industry, is pushing back and conservatives are losing their mind, particularly Brian Lilly, for some reason, he seems to be really uh, in, in a snit about this. Um, this is not weird. South Korea already has these type of labeling, including warning labels like we have on cigarettes, on alcohol bottles and containers, and Ireland is planning on implementing them. So this is not some weird decision. It already exists in other places in the world. Just so you know. And I'm trying to find... Because you'll never hear that. What's the reasoning for... for yeah, but what's the reasoning for not doing it, though, is what I don't get. Like, what? what you know, well, we, we can't do this because because what? Giving people making giving people the information to make an informed decision is a bad thing. Since but when? if the informed since but if when? the informed decision they are likely to make is to not consume your product, mm, I could see them, the alcohol companies pushing back. But why is Brian Lilly is in is he in somebody's I, pocket? I think other the Brian Doug Ford, yeah, maybe like this. Well, all the conservatives seem to be really into alcohol because that's all they want to do all the time. It's like, yeah, now you can bring alcohol to the park. Now you can buy it at the corner store. Mm-hmm. Now you can get a buck of beer. Now you can, you know, it's like. They well, seem and, to be and like really here in the province yeah. of Ontario, that's implemented by a man who does drink. Right. right. <laughs> there, are, what are there? Fourteen cannabis stores within a fourteen or sixteen within a one point five kilometer radius of my apartment. Fourteen. 
Here's a funny one for you. Up the street from where I live, there's a farm boy, and I shop there regularly. Mm -hmm. They had been selling beer. It was it originally opened as a Sobeys. Sobeys bought Farm Boy. They converted the store to a Farm Boy. They still had beer. It was a smaller selection, but they still had beer and a beer cooler. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I walked into the store and I'm like, where'd the beer cooler go? Oh yeah, we're not selling beer anymore. What? what? Why not? Well, according to the government of Ontario, we're too close to the local liquor store, which is one block over. I'm like, yeah, but that store relocated from another place. You guys were here first. Is there no grandfather clause? No. So please explain to me how Doug wants to have beer sold every freaking where. They had a whole campaign about buying beer in the corner stores. But now you have a grocery store that sells beer. They're not allowed to sell it anymore because they're too close to the liquor store and they're in direct competition. But the liquor store is not in the business of selling beer. They're in this business of selling liquor and wine. They also sell beer. Right. I'm like what? What the hell is going on? It's bizarre. I don't understand yeah, it. He wants to put it in corner stores, but he pulls it out of grocery stores yeah. because they're too close, and you're in competition with the liquor store. But the liquor store sells more than just beer, so I do not see the logic there. Oh, and by the way, there is a wine store within the store mm-hmm. that sells Ontario yes. wines. Are they going to make them shut down now? Too? No, because they're they're only allowed to sell Ontario wines. That's right. And they've been around for decades. They've had wine stores in, in grocery stores for decades. So why all of a sudden they can't sell beer? I, I, like, you know what I, what I said for a long time is, if you're going to put beer in corner stores, make it Ontario craft beer in the province of Ontario. Yeah. Craft brewers only in corner stores. No big breweries in corner stores. That'll never happen because, right. you know, big business has Dougie by the fun. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Ah, uh, okay, kids. I think we have a show. What do you think, Mr. Grizzly? Yeah, we got a wrap. We got a wrap. There's uh, another show that starts shortly thereafter. After us, uh, DB2 has got a, a one-hour episode coming up. So we uh, we need to we need to what's, vamoose what's from the DB2? network so he can have his room. It's another it's another program on the network. I don't I don't I don't know. I'll have to oh. check it out. I'm trying to keep up. Uh, okay trying to keep on top of all the other podcasts on the network with the programming. And sometimes it's difficult. So I'll I'll check it out. I'll check it out because he's going to be live at 930. So I'm going to give it a watch because I, I I, I may have already seen the show, but I don't know because it just says DB2 in the programming uh, grid. Yep. That's all. Don't know what DB2 is. We'll find out, I guess. Um, but, but, okay, but so before we go, uh, some kids that joined us uh, during the chat. Good morning, Kit Jillian. Thank you. Good morning, Kit BB. Good morning, Kit Bruce. Uh, lovely to see you joining us from the Philippines this morning. Good morning, Kit, Kit Jillian. Thank you for joining us today as well. If I missed you, I am sorry, kids. Oh, Kit Bell, good morning, you beautiful person. Uh, if I missed you, um, I'm sorry. I just didn't see your name going through during uh, while the thing scrolled. Oh, and Kit Dean Savage, which seems to be a new name for us as well. So thank you. Welcome to uh, the podcast and to the family. I hope you enjoy it here. Ah, Tim, Kit Tim. Yes, lovely to see you. Dean has a very, very poignant uh, statement too here from Dean. Personally, knowing two recovering alcoholics, I didn't care for the grocery store availability in the first place. My convenience isn't worth worth shoving people's addictions in their face constantly. Can't argue with that can't i cannot argue with yeah. that uh I, I i do agree with you i, I do agree with you yeah. I, I just i i question the, the 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 logic of of the ford government yes yes oh they, that's right there is no ah. logic <laughs> That's why you question. Uh, exactly. And hello, Kit Lazy Sunday with Wade and Doe, who says, instead of relying on government guidelines, try using some common sense. It works remarkably. It does. The problem is, yeah. my great, like my aunt Carol always said to me, Dougie, if common sense were actually common, everyone would have it. Exactly. That's the problem. Define common. Define common. Yeah. All right, Kits. That's our show. That's our show. We hope you loved it because we loved making it for you. Remember, sharing is caring. So, and word of mouth is priceless. So, uh, let your peeps know about us. Let all the people that you influence in your circle know that we exist and that we provide really, 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 really good stuff. I see you pointing there. Which are you pointing the right way? Or am I pointing the right way now? Yeah. 
Yeah, now you're pointing the right, right way. There you go. Right there you go. That's the subscribe That's button. The... Make sure to hit that and share. All right. It. There you go. <laughs> uh, I keep moving from side to side, so I don't know which way to put my finger. <laughs> <laughs> always that way. Always that way. No matter where you're sitting, always that yeah, way. But that way is the opposite way yeah. for me. <laughs> like when I'm when I see no, myself but, in the and, camera, I have I have to do the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's confusing because democracy is something you do i can don't have anything for you to take it uh, i've been a little busy binge watching movies oh by the way we uh delivered our jury decisions tomorrow so i'm now back to my regular schedule <laughs> or I don't have to watch 11 movies <laughs> in a certain number of days. So all of a sudden I got free time. So I'll be able to come up with democracy cool. is something that you do for you. Uh, if you have anything that you can suggest in the chat before we're over kits, uh, say what it is that we could do for democracy and I'll yell it out before the show is over. If you really like this podcast, you can find us on Cryer Media Network as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. And they should all be Beaver Grizzly platforms if they're not. Take to the streets. <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't take to the streets, kids. <laughs> Not for us. Not yet, at least. <laughs> Stars and reviews are appreciated. So if you would like to give us some, please. Just giving you a little hint here. High five. <laughs> High five us with five stars. High five. <laughs> or a really good review. Well, you know, we'll hope, we hope for a good review. But good, bad, or ugly, let us know what you think. If it's ugly, please be gentle because, you know, we are sensitive creatures. But your reviews and your stars are greatly appreciated. So please do hand them. And they also help us be found by other people. So please, if you have the time, we would appreciate it. We love to hear from you. So reach out to us on Facebook. The Book of Faces, uh, True North Eager Beaver, uh, at True Eager on Twitter, or by email, True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. If you wish to subscribe to us and receive our podcasts automatically as soon as they are ready, you can go to our pod page, podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver with a hyphen between each of those words, the True North Eager Beaver, and we will come to you, straight to you, as soon as we have stuff for you. You won't miss a single episode. You'll get absolutely everything, even our audio exclusives, because every now and then we do have some audio exclusives, and you don't want to miss those. While you're at it, if you happen to be watching us, why not go to our YouTube page, True North Eager Beaver Media, and smash that button there too. Subscribe to us. That helps us out very much. We can't do this without you and your kind and generous support, so if you feel that we've given you a particularly good amount of information and or entertainment today, well, then please drop a few uh, nickels into our tip jar. You can find it at our coffee page, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver. That's ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver. And notice I said nickels because there's a beaver on it. <laughs> Slip us some beavers. <laughs> Uh, there's an old joke about that. Years ago, in in I forget which European country there was, there was a a topless woman on a on a type of currency prior to the euro, and uh, somebody said, "You got anything like that back in Canada?" He goes, "Well, we got a beaver on the nickel." Mm. Yes, Kitlin Am has it. Yes, and thank you for saying it because I had made a note of it. Yes, because democracy is something you do. Participate in the Ontario budget consultations through February 10th, have your say. The federal ones are also mm -hmm. going up till February 10th, and I would suspect since most provinces do deliver their budgets in April that probably all of them are having budget consultations at the moment. Probably oh, yes. might, yeah. maybe all of them are closing on February 10th or about as well. So uh, please check out, go to your local provincial territorial government uh, website or the federal one and uh, look up budget consultations and do have your say. Thank you, Kitlin M. That's a very, very, very good democracy is something you can, you do recommendation. Uh, and I'm sorry that I had forgotten to written it, write it down because you did suggest that the other day and I had made note of it. You didn't written it down, I didn't did written you? It, you I didn't written it down. down for this morning. I made a note of it somewhere else, but mm. you have to understand, I've got notes in four or five different places. <laughs> depending what's closest to me at the time when I'm listening to a podcast. Oh, I'd write this down on a piece of paper. Sometimes it goes into my phone. Sometimes I'm at the computer and I type it in. So I have to like bring them all together at one point. <laughs> if you want to get something for your money because you are a smart and savvy consumer in this day and age, because, you know, it is inflation for everyone and it is higher interest rates for everyone. Well, we've got you covered with very affordable, good, 
quality to price ratio. Eager Beaver merch. You can buy Mr. Grizzly Civic Tees or Eager Beaver Tees, and we will ship them to you. We have something for literally everybody. Smizes, sizes, smizes. I'm thinking Tyra. Smizes. When you wear it, you have to smize. Smile with your eyes. Um, we have them in sizes small to 3XL. Uh, six different designs for you to choose from. So please go to... Oh, Mr. Grizz is getting up. Have to readjust. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to... I got to okay. readjust. So I stand up to readjust. So while he's doing that, please visit crier.co slash crier hyphen media hyphen shop to get yourself some merch unfortunately we have only the fellows will understand unfortunately that. on the site so far we have only tops and no bottoms <laughs> i got nothing i got nothing <laughs> yes kit bruce the three the, the, everything I, I knew needed to know about becoming a star i learned from tyra first smell with your eyes <laughs> and no, that, that looked psychotic. <laughs> yes, sure. Well, it's like, but it's like, don't smile without the eyes, right? Yeah, that looks psychotic too. <laughs> that's, that's very bad. That that, that was, I got that. It's in the hall. A, it puts the lotion on its skin, <laughs> or it gets the hose again. <laughs> so smile with the eyes. Always find your light, and when you can, booty tooch. Oh, okay. A little booty toot. <laughs> Just pop that hip. Pop Take that your booty. word for it. Just give a little stand like this, and you'll be fine. You'll be high fashion, baby. High fashion. <laughs> From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, I'm so gay sometimes. <laughs> the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourselves. Mr. Grizzly, please give us some words of wisdom. We desperately need them. It's Friday. I'm tired. It's, Friday, it's been a long it's week. Friday. And and uh, oh, please, please don't, <laughs> please don't put that earworm in my head. I will drive to Kingston and slap you for that. God damn it! <laughs> no knock against Rebecca Black. She was only 13 at the time, but God, that was a horrible Friday, song. Friday, I'm in love. There we go. I switched it There, that's better. Let's go with yes. the cure. Monday, Saturday. Anyway, okay. So, uh, words of wisdom today. Um, yeah, if you if you don't have to leave the house, don't. It's gonna be. It's minus. I think we're hitting minus fifty with the wind yes. chill later. It's currently minus forty one in the uh, nation's capital of Ottawa, Canada. And if you have to go outside, do not have any exposed flesh. Somebody goes, well, what about my? I wear a balaclava. Put on ski goggles if you have to. I remember landing in Winnipeg in minus forty eight, and the guy who was working on the tarmac. Came in full balaclava and ski goggles because guess what? That wind in your eyes hurts. Yep. It yes. hurts. Yes. Don't be a meal. Don't be like me, kids, who did not follow Mr. Grizzly's advice and schedule himself an appointment at the physiotherapist and it's a half an hour walk to get there and half an hour walk back. Or that would morning. be an Uber drive today, <laughs> sir. I think you should take an Uber. I may, I may, I may be kind and gentle with myself and splurge for that taxi cab. You, you really should. You really should. I look tropical, but I'm not. But there's still a limit to how low I'm willing to go. <laughs> I live my life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> All right, kids. Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. The True North Eager Beaver podcast is an Eager Beaver Mr. Grizzly collaboration. Research story and guest curation and copy written by the Eager Beaver. Recording, production, editing, and additional research by Mr. Grizzly. Music courtesy of Ben Sound Royalty Free Music. Once again, thank you to our founding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. And thank you to Pete Jarvis for our artwork. We love it. Kits, we'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Take care. Pay attention to the following closing bumper. I changed a few things. I think you'll like this, Mr. Beaver. Here we go. Take care, folks. Stay warm Beaver if you have to go out. And we'll see you soon. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries 
featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. 